Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the East India, East India F and then we'll have a look at the GFS and East India F ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next five days days now we have been talking about recently a lot of warm sunshine for the middle uh, into the last period of march however we have also had a look at the stratospheric warming that has taken place over the north pole now i'm expecting that to propagate through the atmosphere and we have seen some hints over the last couple of days of something perhaps in terms of blocking developing towards the end of March and we're seeing more signals of that today and we're actually seeing some quite cold operational runs over the course of this afternoon uh, so we'll have a look at that uh, and it could indicate even though we could be seeing some quite warm conditions over the next sort of five to seven days beyond that things could turn much colder there's only hints at this stage but with the stratospheric warming ha having or having taken place and taking place at the moment um, it has got legs. There definitely is the potential uh, to come off. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So we start on the GFS. Now you can see we have high pressure building in. The weather fronts that brought heavy rain yesterday are spreading away. And generally many areas in central and southern areas have been really quite pleasant today with sunshine around for some now you see the high pressure really builds in over the course of tomorrow it'll be widely very dry and it should be fairly pleasant temperatures getting up into the mid-teens where we do see sunshine perhaps a little bit higher beyond that we continually see so you pretty warm condition through saturday before we see a pocket of slightly cooler air you can see this little upper trough bringing slightly cooler air in perhaps turning things a little bit chillier back down to maybe 10 degrees or so for highs through Sunday and perhaps um, overnight frosts as well, making more of a return. Now beyond that, the high pressure does hang around and we do start to drag up warmer air once again from the south. So a temporary blip with colder air and it's fairly dry and pleasant. However, as we're towards day 10, low pressure breaks through from the Atlantic and you can see big blocking to our north. We look over the northern hemisphere, you can see Though all these blues and purples are all separated now, that's the tropospheric polar vortex disappearing away and spreading apart with blocking high pressure systems over the Arctic. And if we do run this on, you can see high pressure over towards Greenland and it starts to push cold air out of the Arctic towards Scandinavia and towards the UK. And if we look at the energy of the HPA temperatures, you can see this cold air just to our north. And we do start to drag in some of it towards the end of the run. Not fully, as the block doesn't quite extend all the way into the, uh, the sort of mid to north Atlantic. But it does turn colder. And we could be seeing some wintriness with that overnight frost as well. So definitely a cold uh, run from the GFS today, especially in the longer term. But as we've seen, or as is normal this time of year really, that cold air towards the North Pole is dissipating. If this, for example, pattern happened in January, we would be much colder. Uh, you might, might see that minus 10 line much closer to the UK and the warmer air to our south much further away. So it is a time, uh, it's, it's, it's showing the time of year really, but it's still possible to see some cold weather and there is the potential there. Now if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. You can see the high pressure rebuilt in over the next day. And it continues with that bit of easterly wind, perhaps bringing in and a little upper trough with some showers um, for Sunday perhaps, and some colder air before high pressure really builds in. And you see, right towards day 10, big amplification of the jet stream um, around sort of day 7. And we are starting to pull in bitterly cold air in from the north. Um, and you can see it just narrowly missed the UK and goes into Europe. We still get very cold air down the eastern side before we see high pressure build back in. So only a temporary little cold snap, but it would be really quite cold and chilly because of uh, those upper air conditions and because of the application of the jet stream, most likely being an, uh, an impact from the stratospheric warmings we have seen um, bringing in those northerly winds so we'll have to see exactly how it does play out um, and in the long term uh, day 10 you can see there still is blocking over the north pole just not quite aligning to give cold weather towards the uk so high pressure is still going to be firmly in control but we are seeing perhaps around day 10 or something perhaps colder in from the north so we do now have a look at the ecmwf run which i have a look at already and it does go really quite cold at day 10 um, not for the whole country um, but we do see a cold air, air mass it's sort of very imminently uh, impacting the UK. Now you see high pressure really firmly building over the next day or two. There's no question about that anymore. Bit of a colder air mass moving in for Sunday, 
but return to mild south to south easterly winds and just generally high pressure is controlling but you can see this retrogression of high pressure system up towards greenland bitterly cold air flooding out of the arctic and that will be heading towards the uk at day 10 bitterly cold air look at that temperature deviation around 10 to 12 degrees below average in that bitterly cold period of air and that if that reached uk it would be really chilly indeed snow showers gravel showers temperatures in the day mid single digits really quite cold coming all the way out of the arctic at day 10 from the ecnrf um midnight run so very interesting seeing that all three models showing amplification towards day 10 perhaps a sign of that stratospheric warming starting to take impacts within the mid-range um uh, so we have to see how it does play out i don't think it'll play out uh, like any of these three models exactly but this is this these models show you the potential it could be some chilly transient cold air or it could be a sort of full-blown northerly wind like the eastern df is setting up so we do now have a look at the ensembles, have a look what they're showing over the next couple of weeks. If we do start actually on the GFS, and you can see around average at the moment rising significantly above over the next two days, and that's why we're going to be seeing mid-teens. So then we see that big drop down to maybe minus three, maybe a bit chillier depending on the exact run, exact ensemble level with that slightly colder pool of air coming in off Europe. And then we see a rise back to well above average, and it stays well above average all the way to around the 25th to 27th of March for decreasing more towards, if not below average, right towards the end of the run. Perhaps with some much colder runs appearing down to that minus 5 to minus 10 pit area right at uh, sort of the last few days of March. So no massive support for a colder uh, end of March. But there definitely is a signal of a cooling trend, perhaps. You can see it's well above average for most of the next sort of 10 days, apart from the little blip on Sunday. But right at the end of the run, it does dip below average once again. So perhaps there is a signal for some colder runs appearing. But if we do look at the sea level pressure, you can see firmly higher pressure over the next sort of 5 to 10 days. But we do see lower pressure in the longer term, i.e. Atlantic systems coming back, that high pressure moving more over the Arctic, blocking. Now, of course, blocking doesn't necessarily mean colder weather. Remember, a block can bring in southwesterly winds uh, with the right orientation, but definitely a signal of more lower pressure coming in. If we look at two meter temperatures, you can see generally we could be seeing um, over the next few days, perhaps getting up to around 13, 14 degrees, um, maybe a little bit milder. And next week, it really could be quite warm indeed, maybe 15, 16 or higher, um, getting up to perhaps towards 20 degrees. But we'll have a look at the UK Met Office run, see what that's showing for early next week in a minute. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF run, have a look at the midnight uh, air drift HPA temperature and precipitation. Now, you can see a little bit around average at the moment, maybe a tad chillier than average. Um, and then we could rise significantly above average over the next couple of days before we dip well below average once again by a degree or two for around the 20th of March. And then it goes much above average by a couple of degrees for the next sort of five days beyond that before we see like the GFS, a return to average, if not below average, for the last couple of days of March, with some very cold runs appearing, including the control run. And of course, the operational run only runs up to day 10, but if it did run on longer, I suspect it would have gone very cold as well with that northerly blast coming in. So definitely quite a cooling trend at the end of the ensemble members. We can't look at it too much at this stage, um, because it's, of course, at day 10 and beyond. But definitely perhaps signs of that stratospheric warming starting to uh, sort of give... Some impacts within the mid-range models starting to spice things up, perhaps starting to show those blocking patterns appearing. You see, precipitation is still very low over the next couple of weeks. Precipitation increased around the 21st of March, i.e. Sunday, Monday time with that uh, little pool of cold air could be bringing some showers with it. But elsewhere, other than that, it looks pretty decent in terms of drier weather. So we do finish up the video, but have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature. Now, precipitation is not going to be particularly high at all. Now, you can see some showers in the north at the moment, but they will fade away as high pressure firmly built in for everyone. And by tomorrow, there's going to be some cloud in the north and west as we are closer, of course, to uh, weather fronts and dragging a bit of uh, air in from the Atlantic increasing cloud amounts but it's going to be dry for most and there will be plenty of sunshine around in central areas and eastern areas beyond that we do continue with high pressure and it does look like saturday is going to be a real quite pleasant day not too many uh, clouds at all and it's looking really sunny and amazing really beyond that through sunday we do see these small showers in that cold pool moving not in, not too intense but eventually moves away we stay firmly under higher pressure so just a little bit of blip there 
Now, if you look at max temperatures, now you can see uh, this afternoon we saw temperatures peak around 12, 13, 14 degrees. So not massively warm, but ma not massively cold either. By Thursday evening, temperatures are going to drop uh, high overnight tonight to around freezing in northern areas, but southern areas low single digits. By Friday afternoon, perhaps 14, 15, 16 degrees is possible in the south. And overnight, temperatures dropping away once again to mid-single digits, maybe even low single digits. And by Saturday afternoon, once again, temperatures 13 to 15 degrees, perhaps. Feeling very pleasant in the sunshine. But by Sunday, cold air mass moving in, widespread frost perhaps in central areas. And you can see in the far southeast, really chilly in that cold pool. Perhaps only 4 or 5 degrees um, under that cloud and precipitation but it will be very local uh, it'll be where that cloud lingers and we see that colder pool beyond that though temperatures widely around to low single digits if not frost overnight but monday temperatures starting to rise a little bit 9 10 degrees but you see the constant 16 17 degrees again chilly at night and by tuesday afternoon temperatures really responding to the warm spring sunshine 16 17 degrees Plus, as I said, middle of next week does look really quite pleasant indeed. So we could be seeing some very nice conditions come the middle of next working week. Some proper spring warmth, perhaps, getting up towards that high teens. And there is possibility locally, if we did see the right conditions and we did see the winds fall light, we could be seeing um, temperatures even get up to 20 degrees, perhaps. But again, we'll have to confirm that nearer the time. As I said yesterday's video, there was a possibility of seeing 20 degrees next week, and it still continues on the latest models. But we've got to keep an eye on the longer term, of course, because even though it does look like it will go pretty warm next week, or at least very mild next week, there could be a return to much colder weather if we do see those blocking patterns take hold as a result of the stratospheric warming that, we, that we're seeing at the moment. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.